to reverse visceral fat. Today, we're going to talk about those five things. Why must you do them? Well, let's talk about that for a minute. In today's world, where processed food is abundant and sedentary lifestyles are common, health issues like diabetes and therefore heart disease are on the rise. One neglected factor contributing to these problems is visceral fat or fat around the organs. But why is that a problem? Well, fat around the organs, visceral fat, is not just an inert or harmless tissue for energy storage. It's a hormonal tissue. It produces hormones and, and it contributes to both insulin resistance and cardiovascular plaque, inflammation, disease, and therefore uh, disability and death. That's also why in today's show, we have Dr. Sean Amara as our guest. He'll share his expertise in what visceral fat is, why it's harmful to our health, and especially what those five things are that you must do. So <clears throat> thank you for joining us today, Dr. Amara. And Jesus, I'll hand it over to you. Well, I don't have anything to say just yet. I will intervene a little bit further during the show. I'll, I'll yield to Dr. Amara. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Sure, thank Jesus. You, and uh, Dr. Brewer, thank you for uh, welcoming and having me on your show. Um, I, I have to say that was the, the best introduction I've ever had. I, I've done hundreds of shows, <laughs> thousands probably, uh, talking about visceral fat. But um, I could tell just from that introduction that you did that you are aware of visceral fat and the harm that it causes. And so you're, you're already an ex exceptional physician because most physicians are not. It's not taught or at least well taught in medical school. It may be mentioned, but it's oftentimes in passing and doesn't get the attention that it really deserves. And so if you're listening today, you could go and have a conversation to test my position about that uh, have a conversation with your own physician and ask him or her about visceral fat. And you'll find it will be a short conversation because they really don't have much to say because they don't know much about it. But hopefully after our time together and you see in the show, uh, that changes for you and you understand it. And I'd like to be able to think that the majority of people listening today develop first an interest in visceral fat, why it's so bad, and most importantly, how eliminating it can and will improve your life. And I will say it at the outset right now, more than anything else you can work on. In my experience, as a physician of almost 30 years practice, <clears throat> I'm not aware of anything else a human being can work on to improve them. <clears throat> so let's, uh, you know, for introductory purposes, show where visceral fat is and allow you to see it. And I think that's the most helpful thing for an audience. So I like to use a graphic uh, and we'll capture an image. All my images that I try to get on client patients who come to me are in the transverse plane. So we create an image, a slice, if you will, through the abdomen. Uh, and this is the image as it appears unaltered. So MRI images represent mostly black and white or shades of black and white might be gray. And fat shows up, any white you see is fat. And you just, fat shows up as white. And muscle, bone, and organ shows up as dark. They're darker structures. So uh, one of the things that you want to be is mostly dark and very little white. And so kind of an interesting metric is the more dark you are, the better and healthier and the better the quality of your life that you live. The more white you are, the less healthy you are and the less quality of life you will experience down the road. And why I say down the road is not present because visceral fat, as Dr. Brewer explains, is inflammatory and it secretes inflammatory molecules. So we could open you up surgically, implant a lot of visceral fat inside of you. 
and you will be perfectly fine for a while. But as that visceral fat secretes these inflammatory molecules through a trickle, it slowly degrades everything in your body. It just goes everywhere and causes inflamm an inflammatory response and, and chronic disease. And so that's why it's important to understand it's the influence of visceral fat and not just the presence. So you could very quickly put on a lot of visceral fat and very quickly lose it and be relatively unscathed. But the man or woman who slowly builds it, which is typical for most people, will eventually accumulate a lot of chronic disease. So it's why you wanna see what's going on inside of you, not just once, but over a period of time to determine whether you're living correctly or improperly. So this image is the first scan of the physician, researcher, MD, PhD, Dr. CJ Zen, who shared with me first about visceral fat. I didn't know anything about it. I had this vague awareness of fat inside, inside him. But Dr. Zeng had studied it because he was looking at backs and he saw the people with the worst backs on MRI scans had the most white, this white stuff. And so he learned very early on in the association of uh, back conditions, back disease, lumbar disease with, it, with visceral fat. So he scanned himself and lo and behold, he was filled with it. But he's what's called a tophi which is thin on the outside. So this is fat on the outside called subcutaneous fat. And fat on the inside is visceral fat. They're bricks and clouds difference, very, very different. So we paint them different colors up here. Red is for danger, visceral fat, disease. The yellow is subcutaneous fat. So this was uh, CJ's, Dr. Zhang's first scan. But let's look at a more kind of a typical uh, MRI scan if somebody will come to me. Um, this person has a voluminous amount of visceral fat inside. And let's look at its association, visceral fat, with some other bad fat. And I mentioned to you, muscles are dark. So these are the oblique muscles. These are the erecta spining muscles. And I'll just briefly return to Dr. Zen's back muscles here. Um, they're pretty dark. But this individual is older and has way more visceral fat. And now they have infiltrating fat in their erecta spiny muscles, the muscles that keep your, your spine erect. So after a period of time, when that inf inflammatory fat starts going into your muscle, not just in your abdomen, you, get your, you lose your ability to keep your back erect. And so now you see the contribution and posture of a man or woman from the, the ravaging uh, devastation that happens from this inflammatory fat in the muscles, oblique muscles, erect back muscles. These are the psoas muscles. This is the vertebral body, but all that fat. So the important association is as visceral fat accumulates, it also accumulates in muscle. And let's look at a those two are very, very bad forms of fat. And I will say about this muscle fat, just this year, AI determined in looking at multiple studies and outcomes with disease, that as high as mortality is for a person who's obese, and that's quite high, those obese people do not live as long lives as other people, and their quality of life is impaired relative to normal people. Well, you should be aware if you're listening that if you have this inflammatory fat in your muscle, it's called myosteatosis, muscle fat or adverse muscle composition. You have double the mortality risk of an obese person. So heads up, you want to know if you're getting this fatty infiltration into your muscle and it really turns on this visceral fat. So this stuff is really important. One, the third bad player that I want to talk about is contained within the subcutaneous fat. So this stuff is sub-Q because it's underneath the skin right in this area here. But there's a black line right in the middle of this subcutaneous fat. That's a membrane called scarpus fascia. 
and it separates subcutaneous fat into two compartments. Very interesting. Now, both Dr. Brewer and I went to medical school, and we know if there is some sort of separation in tissue, it has some sort of biological significance. And it does because bricks and clouds difference between these two compartments. This one leads to disease in the same manner visceral fat does. And let's give it a name. It's called deep subcutaneous fat, deep to scarpus fascia to the muscle. This one, this compartment is smaller is called superficial subcutaneous fat. So it's superficial to the skin, only to the membrane. So this one I told you secretes the same inflammatory molecules as visceral fat. Superficial subcutaneous fat doesn't secrete those inflammatory molecules, but secretes something else that's protective against disease. It's beneficial. You want it. And it's called adiponectin, ADI, P-O-N-E-C-T-I-N. So I hope you write it down and I hope you develop an interest in adiponectin because big pharma and the big healthcare system doesn't want you to know about adiponectin. They don't want you to know about visceral fat and they don't want you to know about muscle fat, myosteatosis. So now you know three bad players and one good one. The, the fourth bad player is organ fat that Dr. Brewer mentioned around the heart or inside inside of organs. But to help you understand, hopefully you develop an interest in getting an MRI scan, and maybe we'll talk about why you, you, you wanna get, and particularly your visceral fat evaluated by, this, by an MRI scan, but let's show these two examples to help the audience, if you're listening today, understand how uh, what is a good MRI scan in terms of visceral fat and what is a bad one? So the image at the top is from a, a 30 year old that's got a nice oval shaped abdomen. They're oval shaped, like yours might have been when you were 16, 17 years of age, an oval shape. And now if you're like 50 or 60, you got more of a dad bod, a belly that's protruding out anteriorly this way, okay? That's a dad bod. And that happens over a period of time. And it's not from old age, it's from disease. And it happens to men and women. Women, I'll just be honest with you, tend to say it's because I've had babies. When they come to me, I show them, no, it's not because you've had babies, it's because you have visceral fat weakening your muscles. So the sagittal abdominal diameter, meaning the diameter of the abdomen in the sagittal plane up and down here, reflects how much visceral adiposity, how much visceral fat you have in there. This diameter is much smaller than this one. This guy is mostly dark, very little white. This guy is mostly white, very little dark. Heads up, the more white you have, the smaller these muscles get because this stuff is wasting and atrophying your muscles. So when you're accumulating this visceral fat inside, you're shrinking your muscles they're gonna do this for you. When you're 85 years old, allow you to get up and out of a chair and to walk without a cane, without a walker, and without having to use a wheelchair. So you want to protect your body, especially those muscle tissues, because it's your muscle and its performance that aligns so much with your quality of life. Can you get up, walk around, get groceries, eat, go have a lunch with your great, great grandchild? That's what you want to be able to do when you're older. And visceral fat eliminating will help you do it. Here's the guy, the 30-year-old, that has the oval-shaped abdomen. This game with very little visceral fat, nice muscle. He's Gabe. He's in the Army with me. I'm still uh, active military service in the Army National Guard. And uh, Gabe serves with me. Well, let's look at another scan. This is um, the single best female scan I've ever seen. And I like to say it's one of my clients that I've got them into this great shape. But the truth was, they're not a client. There's somebody that I found on social media on the internet, and this is their photograph. So they have very nice, healthy looking legs, a very nice, healthy abdomen, a very nice, healthy looking arms, elegant looking arms, really healthy, full head of hair. Uh, you can see a little bit of gray in there. So you know, she's 
not going to be somebody in her teens. And she has a very attractive face as an attractive face. The interesting thing is this woman is 59 years of age. So how is it that she looks so healthy? And let's, let's really address that. How she looks so attractive. She's beautiful. The reason is not because she doesn't have visceral fat in her scan, this one here. The reason is she's never had it, never. Her whole adult life, she has been eating low carb Atkins. So while many of us may have started Atkins in the 60s and 70s, I remember being an Atkins family, my mom did it until some other crazy diet came along and we'd, we abandoned uh, avoiding carbohydrates to avoid fat. Then we went on snack well, eat well, low fat, non-fat cookies and muffins, and that was supposed to make us healthy, and we fell apart. This woman stayed with Atkins, and she never developed visceral fat. She's one of the few that stayed with Atkins for decades because the government came on board, my plate, all that kind of stuff, and started promoting low fat, that fat was a problem. And they taught us that in medical school. Well, this woman rejected that, her mom did. And so she has this lack of visceral fat for her whole life. And so she has not had the trickle, trickle, trickle of those inflammatory molecules over a lifetime causing her to have disease. And so she looks quite healthy to this day. That's why she has that attractive feature. All right, let's look at one other association um, with visceral fat to muscle fat in the legs, in the skeletal muscles of the legs. The legs are so key to you. It's why bodybuilders say never skip a leg day. They're just so important to our functionality. When you work out your legs, it actually helps you work out your, your other muscles. And so let's look at this scan here, lots of visceral fat again, you should be able to see that. And then look at all the white streaks now in the legs of this individual. So we scan mm -hmm. through their, their thighs, and these are the femurs, the bones that are in the thigh. And all these white streaks are inflammatory, infiltrating deposits of fat that are really similar to visceral fat, only it's in the muscle. And the more visceral fat you have, the more we see of this. And I've seen this in thousands of patients. The less visceral fat, like this guy is the single healthiest abdomen I've ever seen, the healthiest male I've ever physically examined. He's an Olympic sprinter. And look at his enormous, gigantic muscles, gigantic core. I mean, they're just, this is a vertebral body. Look at his core, literally he's wall to wall muscle. There's like nothing else. His GI tract is this condensed area right here. My partner and I, research partner and I, wondered how he ever digested food because he was just so muscular inside. So, but look how lean his muscles are. There's no fatty de deposition in there. So this guy is like filet mignon um, and he looks like filet mignon in his legs. The legs are lighter, but that muscle should be dark. It's just a, a contrast issue that when I captured that on my cell phone, uh, the, 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 the exposure was up too high. But what you don't see are the white streaks. That's the take on point. No infiltrating fat in this. So he's filet mignon. This guy right here, Wagyu beef. That's what I call him, human Wagyu muscle. So that's what happens when you're accumulating that. And nobody tells so you Sean, that. Let, let me interrupt just a second. That one, that picture was a little bit confusing. And just to repeat, those lower, uh, the images of the legs on the lower one, that's, a, that's an artifact of the technology. It's really, if it were in the regular technology, it would be dark all the way through. Exactly. Muscle. Yeah, very good point. So if these muscles are exactly as dark as these muscles, only the contrast on my laptop when I turned it up was so high <clears throat> that um, that appeared uh, very light. But that muscle, I'll have to work on that because it comes up because people think it's all fat. <clears throat> right. It's not. You, the thing is, I would bet my family fortune, I would bet my life, when you see pure muscle like this, it's pure all over. You, when you see muscle like this, it's like that 
all over. Every time, thousands of times I've seen it. How many exceptions? None. There's never an exception. As you have that visceral fat, you will have that fat in those, in those legs. So all in your arms, all the different muscle bodies. So it's, it's really an important point. So I'm glad you, 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 uh, you, you highlighted that. And this is what it looks like. Dr. Sean, Dr. Sean, yeah. uh, if I may, I, I, I have two comments to say, um, quick interruption. This is kind of an intermission for us. Um, we have a lot of people coming on and saying, hey, you mentioned Tofi and I don't believe that I'm on a really bad metabolic state. I mean, I'm thin. I don't have that much body fat outside of me. I never got done an MRI. What would you say to those people? What is it? What What's worst to have a lot of people, uh, a lot of fat on the subcutaneous area below your skin or having visceral fat or both? Yeah. So the worst is, believe it or not, is being a Tofi. So when you are <clears throat> thin outside and fat inside. So uh, an example of a, a Tofi is uh, Dr. Dr. Zeng's uh, scan right here. So he's he's a Tofi because he's got less fat outside and more fat inside. The, the dilemma that people have is they presume because they're thin that they don't have a lot of visceral fat inside, that they're healthy. And so you cannot tell by just being thin. You have to see what's lurking inside. So that's why I like the MRI, uh, because the MRI does not lie. The MRI stops the lie. If you're being lied to thinking that you're healthy just because of presumption, you never really have had a scan, then an MRI will lighten you to what's really going on inside so you can actually you know, see that, uh, see that image and also see you know, whether your muscles are like marbleized beef, whether you have that infiltrating dangerous fat inside of you. So as it turns out, Tofis have significantly higher risk. They're more at risk than uh, an individual who is mostly fat outside. They might even be, you know, a plain obese, but they have low level visceral fat and that's where AI picked up on this. Because somebody is a TOFI is going to have this inside their muscles. And so they're at high risk. So they might be walking around looking thin, but they, in fact, are at an increased risk. And to, it's very interesting. I see a very select population of people. Who comes to me? Business executives, uh, leaders, uh, because they get information quickly and they're like, I don't want to have a stroke. I don't want to have cancer. And I want to get rid of this disease. And they're used to optimizing their businesses. Now they believe they can optimize their body when they find out about me. But here's what I find. They've never allowed themselves to be uh, patently obese. They're not obviously heavy on the outside. But when I scan them, they're way higher filled with visceral fat inside than fat on the outside. And it's because they lead. Restless is the head at night that wears the crown. So if you are head of a company, a vice president, you run organizations, you're a leader, you have more stress. And that cortisol causes deposition of visceral adiposity, visceral fat forms. So any leader uh, should be doing an MRI in themselves to see what's going on in the inside. So thank you, Nito. thank you, uh, and, and I'm and I'm sorry, Doctor Morrow. I'll let you continue just in one moment, real quick. Yeah, this is, this is something I need to do. Um, if you're new to the channel, if you're enjoying this content, if you're looking forward to improve your health, uh, I'm just gonna make a, a real quick plug in here. We have an event, Dallas, Texas, April 18th to the 20th. You still have an option to register. We have Doctor Brewer and our providers from PrevMed. We're going to talk about cardiovascular prevention, how to avoid heart attacks and strokes. Of course, we're going to be discussing some of visceral fat. We have the expert, the number one person talking about visceral fat today here on the show. Uh, we are going to double down on the Dallas, Texas event mm -hmm. and talking about other cardiovascular risk factors as well. So if you haven't signed up into that, you're still on time. 
there are multiple ways of payment, no payment wall for you. Uh, just go ahead, visit prepmedhealthevents.com. Uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Romero, I needed to do that plug in. I'll let you continue. Thank you so that's much. That's great. I, I hope that summit goes well. I'm super glad to hear you guys are going to be covering um, visceral fat. And uh, yeah, I hope people attend that because I'm really excited what's happening in social media because uh, I think your ability at PrevMed to to reach people is, um, is, is just not available through conventional healthcare. So social media, uh, the internet is allowing us to get people and say, hey, you know, you don't have to have disease and wake up, pay attention to what's going on inside your body. So let's look at some examples in legs. This is a 40 year old and here's a 74 year old. They largely, their legs look pretty comparable. If anything, the 74 year old is slightly better. Now right in the middle is another 74 year old, mostly fat, their muscles are shrinking, they're atrophying, they're separating, they're fragmenting. There's fatty deposition of fat going on and so they're more fat than they are muscle. Now they may not know that, they won't, unless they have an MRI, because they'll see the diameter of their legs look pretty much like the diameter of this guy's all muscle. Now whose quality of life do you think is better? Now what's interesting to know is, look at this, the scan uh, at the top. Um, these are scans through the, the legs and the darkest bone, Fat is white. So it's bone marrow in the in those legs. And you can see how thick that bone is in this image. And also in the 74-year-old down, down here, how thick the bone is, the bony cortex. But let's look at that 74-year-old right in the middle. Can you see that? Uh-oh, look how thin that black is. Because as visceral fat is secreting on those molecules, is contributing to the, the uh, lysine of those osteocytes and the bone is actually going away. They're thinning their, their bones from the inside out. That's why it's mostly white. These bones erode from the inside out and it creates this potential space for more bone marrow as the bone is, is, is uh, being eroded. So you wanna catch this because look how thin it is. You, have, you should be aware that older people fracture their bones and it's really just spontaneous breaks. They're standing up and body weight and just the bone is so thin, it fractures. And so, you know, the surgical treatment for that is a rod that goes down, but they only treat these after the age of 85 uh, for people that were gonna have a good outcome because the average person who fractures that bone is dead after the age of 95. Uh, within one year, 95% mortality because of all this accumulation of disease, not the fracture of the bone, it's the pathology that accompanies and precedes the fracture of the bone, renders that person in such a poor state that by the time that, that bone is spontaneously fracturing, they have fallen apart and they have so much chronic disease, they're just gonna be dead in a year. And so even if you surgically correct it, it won't work they're still gonna die. But the guy at the bottom, or maybe it's a woman, if you surgically correct them, they'll be perfectly fine. In fact, if you fracture that leg, they'll be perfectly fine because they're very healthy. I can tell that they're vigorous, they're vital. Um, they've got a lot of vitality um, and an absence of chronic disease. So one of the ways surgeons make a determination who gets treatment is again, why I shared before. At the time, before you broke your leg, at the age of 85, could you get out of a chair without assistance? If you can, they surgically correct it. If you couldn't and you needed help, they call hospice. Now's the time to make that decision about your health care. Do you want to make that decision? Do it now. Start taking care of your body. Do not let somebody else make that decision. And you can't even pay your way to have it. Let's say you're 85. If you think you're 85 and that spontaneously breaks and you're just gonna pay a surgeon, well, well, I just wanna correct it anyhow. He or she won't be able to correct that because they'll be violating standard of care and run the risk of somebody filing a complaint with the Board of Medicine because you're still going to die. The surgery won't work. You got that disease and that surgeon knows it. 
So you want to prevent yourself from being limited and having that much disease where your options are, are sealed. Your fate is sealed. You, you don't have any more availability. So get started. I'm glad you're on this channel watching this and uh, uh, aware of it. Now, a little bit of good news. Here's a client. Again, these white things uh, is artifact. It's not white streaks. They're, they're dots from lights in the ceiling. I'm a better scientist than I'm a techie with internet technology. I'll just say that. But his muscles are very lean. You see how lean those muscles? His bone is very thick. This is my oldest client. He's 78 years old. He, he hunts elk and he teaches younger guys how to hunt elk and he sprints up the mountains, uh, eats a very healthy um, uh, carnivore diet and he eats ferments, which I recommend. And uh, he sprints up the hills. So he's been a client for uh, the longest period of time. He's my oldest client and he's 78 years old. But when this guy is not out hunting elk, He's chairman of the board of a national bank. So this guy runs a bank, uh, very, very sharp, really wonderful um, individual. So um, now let me show you, and maybe for, and we'll take, take some questions if there's, if there's time. This is an important scan. Why you, what you gotta do to get rid of visceral fat, okay? So let me just, I wanna be able to show this scan. And this is a series of scans that we did in an individual over uh, 35 weeks. So this is scan number one at week zero. And we painted the visceral fat red. So it's got this red color. And we painted um, the myosteatosis, the fat in the muscle, also red. So this guy is, is uh, 68 years old. He's the CEO of a company, very well off, affluent guy, bit of a curmudgeon. He wouldn't do our protocol for the National Science Foundation. He was a busy guy. He said, I'm only going to do one thing. I'm going to cut out carbohydrates, stop eating processed foods. I'm just going to eat clean, eat meat and vegetables. That's, that's, all, that's all he would do. And so in two weeks, none of you have been to medical school except for Dr. Brewer. Probably, well, There might be some physicians in the audience. But you can see that the red has shrunk here in two weeks. And after 35 weeks, look at how much he'd reduced his visceral fat. And he actually got a six pack. So he goes from having a dad bod here, like a barrel belly, to having this nice six pack, like he's a college swimmer in his 20s. And reduced a lot of visceral fat. And all of his myosteatosis, those fatty infiltrates, fatty infiltrates in his muscle are now gone. So now he's enjoying, he can walk better. He's got more energy. But the remarkable thing in these scans, so I love it so much, is this guy only changed his diet. He did not exercise one minute. So if you think you're going to achieve a level of health by exercise and still eat processed foods, you're sadly mistaken. The MRI showed us in 6,000 people the critical necessity of diet. What goes into your body? How important that is uh, on your level of health. So I wanted, and, and then maybe I'll just show this one other scan, the same time period, what happened to his heart. So the fourth bad player mentioned by Dr. Brewer fat is organ fat. So this is fat around the heart. This is the left lung field, the right lung field, and in the middle of the lung is your heart. So this same 68 year old executive had a huge amount of heart fat and we see it corresponds to visceral fat. So as fat in the abdomen is forming, it's forming around your organs or inside your organs. But look at the dramatic reduction in his heart fat in just not 35 weeks, in just 13. So it's remarkable how fast that goes away. And the last scan I'll show you are the changes that are happening in the vascularity. That's a fancy term for your blood vessels, your arteries, your veins, your capillaries. When it comes to real estate, it's location, location, location. When it comes to health, it's blood flow, blood flow, blood flow. If you cannot get blood with the best nutrients and energy and oxygen to the tissues, they're just going to uh, deteriorate and they'll become more diseased.
So these are arteries coming up into the brain. This is called the circle of willis or cerebral arteries, brain arteries. And dark is good, blood flow is good until right there. And this is called the middle cerebral artery. So the middle cerebral artery is typically the artery that's most commonly the site of a stroke. And the blood flow is deteriorated there. We don't see as much blood flow in this individual. And on the left side, look at this huge area deficiency that, that circle in white there's you can't even see any blood flow through there now it does trickle because we can see the distal segment has a little bit of filling in it but that's a big lesion and dr brewer right now is thinking god that's not good he's hoping i don't have anything like that in my middle cerebral artery but what we found when we started scanning our clients at the very end of the study for the National Science Foundation is the people that had the most visceral fat had these clogged arteries when they got into their 50s and 60s. The association with visceral fat to arterial disease is real. And we didn't know, we didn't know what to look for. People, our subjects in the study were saying, why am I more intelligent? Why am I more articulate? Why is my memory so better now that I've gotten visceral fat? What is it in your brain that visceral fat being removed improves your brain. So that's why we started scanning that. And here's the answer. Nine months later, we see this artery is opened up and this artery is opened up. Literally, when you get rid of visceral fat, you improve your blood flow in your arteries. Question, why? Why does that have, what role does visceral fat have with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease? Now I've spoken about confidence you know, about all these other things. Now I'm gonna tell you my own theory. As you've seen that fatty infiltration in the skeletal muscle, this is what Sean thinks, Dr. Sean O'Mara thinks. There's another type of muscle in your body called smooth muscle. And smooth muscle is in your gut, in your endocrine system, your glands, and your vasculature. In fact, the largest part of a blood vessel is the smooth muscle. And I am theorizing, I don't know for sure, that these fatty infiltrates that are going into skeletal muscle are also going into smooth muscle. And so it causes the occlusion of these vessels in atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. And one of the ways we are theorizing that is because as we study these 6,000 people and they got rid of visceral fat, they started reporting the onset of visible pulses. They could start seeing their arteries in their, uh, uh, in their arms and legs were flashing. They could see pulses. You didn't have to feel a pulse. In, uh, in the ER, we'd have to go up, feel a pulse to try to get arterial blood gases, like blood samples from the artery. Well, goodness gracious, if I could see the artery, that would have made my job a lot easier. Wouldn't it, Dr. Brewer, you know, a re intern or resident, or you're trying to do an ABG, if you could see that artery, man, you're gonna nail it. But we don't talk about that in conventional medical care, visible pulses and how healthy some of these vessels are, you know, physically. But that's what we saw, people were reporting that. And the other interesting thing is erectile functionality. So I'll end at this and maybe take some questions. As you get better blood flow, you would expect that your erectile functionality, if you're male, just to, you know, to start improving. But here's one that I had no idea. I never even thought about this until it started happening to our people. Males started reporting this. Not only do they get a nice firm erection again, but this is what happens over a period of time. Slowly, their erection gets a bounce with the heartbeat. Uh huh. When you were 16, if you're a male, that's what your erection did. Every heartbeat, you had a bounce. And now we see people that are, are doing these strategies that we developed for the National Science Foundation and, and I've built on over my uh, five years since then. Uh, we really get that bounce back uh, because the improved significant blood flow that happens as you get rid of that visceral fat. So. Just want to leave that on a encouraging note for any males out there listening. If you're suffering from erectile dysfunctioning, if your muscles are sagging, you have sarcopenia, you have chronic disease, 
I want to invite you. I want to implore you to get rid of these deadly fats that are inside of you. And it's, it's going to be up to you to do this because your doctor doesn't know about it. You have got to go get these scans um, by yourself. You can ask your physician, um, tell him, him or her that you'll pay out of pocket for an MRI scan to be done and you pay for it. Don't let don't let your healthcare decisions about your most important asset, your body, be left to an insurance company. You are the CEO of your body. You are in the position to make the best decision and choice about your body. So spend the money on your most important asset, not your car, not your house, not stock portfolio or crypto or whatever you're spending money on. Spend it on your health so you can avoid having a stroke, so you don't get cancer, uh, you don't have chronic disease, uh, and you, you enjoy decades more of quality living. Thank you so much, Dr. Mora. So really, really important stuff. I wanted to do a little segue. First, if you are on YouTube, you probably have seen a lot of advertisement with our videos and other health channel videos and you get this guy like i think the name is b shred and and other people that are just trying to mislead and telling you that you can eat anything and just do the minimum amount of exercise and you will get shredded be careful about that that stuff uh dr Moore just exposed how important diet is and some people will have that uh, the advantage if they are eating just staying away from processed foods and then you add exercise and you're gonna get major improvement. So if you wanna know more about that, reach out to Dr. Brewer, reach out to Dr. O'Mara for a good advice, not, not follow any, any person on YouTube. And the second one is, uh, Dr. O'Mara, we, we sometimes are uh, under fire because we are changing our titles. And uh, a few weeks back, I reached out to your office and I was like, can Dr. O'Mara share with us five simple steps to get rid of visceral fat? Uh, you have showed us uh, marvelously how important is visceral fat and why you should get rid of it. Can you summarize for us what are those five steps that a lot of people are interested in knowing? Yeah, to get rid sure. Of I'll be I'll be glad to do that. In fact, uh, what I recommend, I'm going to pull this um, up and uh, encourage everybody uh, to take a screenshot of that because these are the strategies uh, that. I recommend I put my I stake my reputation on it. And let me just say there have been people for the past four years that have written me that they, their whole lives have been changed simply because I freely shared this information. They've turned themselves around and started not just getting healthier, but actually optimizing, optimizing themselves. So uh, take a screenshot of that. And uh, uh, maybe a good illustration of how, um, and I, I meant to do this, so I'm just thinking about it right now. A good illustration of how much uh, that you can you can improve over a period of time when you do these strategies uh, is is best represented by what happened to me when I found out a visceral visceral fat. So this is me. I don't even look like the same person today, and it's not because. I lost weight. It's because I lost visceral fat. I weigh 165 here. Today, I weigh 180. So I'm actually 15 pounds lighter, but I have lost all my visceral fat. I've lost all my myosteatosis, all the, the dangerous inflammatory fat that causes disease, also decreases your performance and it, it decreases your appearance. And so today, look at the change 11 years later in the appearance of my face. And so as you eliminate this inflammatory fat, your appearance improves. And that's important if you're a leader, if you're running an organization, if you're in sales, if you're a consultant and your clients have to listen to your advice, they will receive it better if they look better. And this should be the case with physicians. Physicians should look better. And uh, then patients would be more inclined to track them. So very often we pay more attention to the younger physicians because they look better rather than the older ones. But 
the truth That's is. For sure. <laughs> What's that? I'm sorry. I, I'm just saying that that's for sure. Just take a look at the screen, but go ahead. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just interrupting. So I was about to, about to say Dr. Brewer is the type of physician you want to follow because um, he's an older guy who has demonstrated that he's lived many years, but he looks good. So my definition of health is how you look and how you perform. That's where I put my money in. And that's that's really what I get my clients to pay attention to, not numbers, how you look and how you perform. So let me ask you, if you're listening today, do you want to work for numbers, like a bank account that has numbers? No. You want to work for money that gets you a car, a nice house, a nice boat, nice air travel, nice vacations good quality food. You're not working for numbers. You're working for sensorial experiences in your senses. And so pay attention, use your senses to assess whether a physician is good or bad, but how they look and how they perform. And Dr. Brewer is, is doing a great job, I can tell, just my brief uh, interaction with him on this, this uh, uh, podcast that w- while we're doing this. And let me get back to V-Shred. So why do you not listen to that guy? One, no gray hair. If you follow the young, the young look good because of their genetics. The old look good because how they lived. And what's more influential in your health rather than genetics is epigenetics. These switches and signals on genes that turn on and off genes expressions. So you have the ability to influence your genetic makeup in most cases, just through your lifestyle, whether something is gonna be expressed or suppressed based on what you do. So lifestyle is critically important. And so V Shred, yeah, he's eating pizza and donuts, but when he's uh, Dr. Brewer's age or my age, he ain't gonna look so good. Nobody's gonna be following him. So he can get away with it for now. That visceral fat is small. He's a young guy, but it's slowly going to accumulate. And the reason is not because of it, how he works out. It's his microbiome. So it's a collection of microbes inside of you. It's favorably improved through uh, diet, lifestyle, exercise, sleep, a lot of things. So uh, eventually he's going to, he'll be a has-been He'll just be a guy who was back in 2024 that looked good. Unless he goes to somebody like Dr. Brewer and goes to a PrevMed conference or comes sees me and learns what he should really be doing to, to pay attention to. But let's go back to those screenshots and I'll walk through them real quick so that um, people understand. They're, the first ones are pretty easy. We've already talked about eliminating those processed, processed foods, carbohydrates. We've talked about that. And the second one is important. You want to eat fermented foods because fermented foods have microbes in them. They're living foods. So these microbes, beneficial microbes, go down into your gut and positively uh, contribute to your microbiome, which is your single most important asset, physical asset inside your body. In my opinion, Sean O'Meara's opinion, is your microbiome, that collection of, of bacteria, viruses, fungi, yeast, archaea, and other species that we're, we're, we're starting to learn about. And then you, you want to practice doing some extended fasting. Uh, autophagy is a fantastic way that cells clean up the debris and the consequence of living, you know, it's just the garbage that gets created just from us living, gets cleaned up when we're fasting. So right now, I'm at 76 hours into a 96-hour fast. So I'm fasting working on my autophagy and then do max intensity exercise, max intensity weightlifting. Don't go work out for 30, 45, 60 minutes. I go do a workout for about 15 minutes, highly intense, uh, or I get very short of breath, lifting weights, box jumps, sprinting, uh, gym rings. And uh, I make it intense and then make it brief. I saved my clients a lot of time eliminating all the nonsense cardio and stuff. And uh, I get them doing some, some really intense exercise. 
And then stress hormesis, that which does not kill you makes you better. So things like a sauna, uh, cold exposure, uh, sunshine, um, blood donation and blood BFRs or blood flow restriction bands. I actually have BFR bands on right now. They're loose right now because I was working out. And those blood flow restriction bands kind of like take you up to altitude when you train at Colorado and it makes it harder to work out. And the studies using an MRI, we see athletes that use BFR grow more muscle and they have better performance at the end of a study, six week study, compared to athletes that exercise without them. So we're using them now in the military and DOD. They're now part of our training because there's real science behind it. And so particularly if you're older, you should be using them to help you with sarcopenia. And then the last, last one is interesting. It's optimizing all these things, the microbiome, nitric oxide, which is a subject of 1992 Nobel Prize of Medicine because of its importance to health in medicine, nitric oxide gets produced um, in the endothelial si lining of your cells in your vasculature, and it really regulates your blood flow. And it's why we see visible pulses, why we see the bounce in an erection, and you have significant improvement in blood flow. There's also oxytocin. You want to optimize your sleep, sunshine. Um, you want to optimize vitamin D. Optimize your sodium levels, a real quick hack. Taste your sweat when you go into a sauna, when you work out. You don't have to wait for a chemistry, you know, once a year, once every six months, see where your sodium levels. Our ancestors tasted their sweat. If it's really sweaty, time to drink water. If it's really dilute, your body's craving salt. Time to get more salt into you. So there's, that's my hack, the guy trying to figure out how to optimize people. Sodium, mitochondria, uh, optimize your insulin sensitivity, melanin, autophagy, chaperone proteins, our type of protein created in saunas, you go into hot environments or cold environments, any kind of a hormetic experience, adiponectin. So you could go and read and study and spend hours and days reading how to optimize, or you can work with somebody like Dr. Brewer or myself who knows how to do these things and save a lot of time. So who should go to Dr. Brewer, or to me, to me, one thing I always say is, if you have more money, then you have time. In other words, your time is really short. Then come to me rather than sit and trying to figure it all out. Um, we, myself and my coaches have already got it down. We'll give you the metrics, do the MRIs, and optimize it. That's what I like to do. But I'm not forever because MRIs are expensive. Uh, and one day, I will get these cheaper. I'll figure out a way to do MRIs way cheaper. But for the time being, um, our service is really for people that can afford to do MRIs to track that. Now, down the road, we're, we're going to use facial photographs. I'll be able to see, just like change in my face, I see it in my clients. We're, we're creating technology to read uh, disease in people's faces. And it will be a lot cheaper just through your cell phone and we'll tell you what you got to do. So that's what my startup is doing. We're cutting edge, um, very interesting startup that that uh, I've begun uh, to really optimize human beings. But for the time being, time time being, it's it's a, a select uh, type of clientele I work with who can afford to do these MRIs. Wonderful. So, Dr. Amara, if I may, let me try to summarize this for the audience. Uh, five steps you need to do to reverse visceral fat according to Dr. Sean Amara. So number one, eliminate ultra-processed foods and carbohydrates. Number two, optimize your microbiome by consuming fermented foods. Number three, incorporate fasting like OMAD and trigger that autophagy. Number four, engage in maximum intensity exercise, high intensity interval training, sprinting, weightlifting. And number five, embrace stress hormesis through activities such as sauna, cold plunges, and blood flow restriction. Is that an okay summary, Dr. Omar? Yeah, that's a very good summary, Jesus. And uh, Thank you if so much. Your, your followers um, adopt those strategies, they will, they will start seeing immediate improvement in their life that will continue 
really for the rest of their life. I, I have not been able to see identify a single point, even in uh, with clients in their 80s, where this where they stop improving once they start living this way. Wonderful. So let me go to a little segue again. Let's go ahead and go to a Q&A section. And you're going to be able to ask any question that you have about Mr. Fat to Dr. Sean Amara. Uh, Rafi, send us there, please. So, Jesus, let me let me start with a couple of questions, and I'll give the answers as well. So, so are, you still, are, you, are you still here, Dr. Brewer? I yeah, thought you I'm were still here. I've been very quiet. <laughs> I've been enjoying the show. I'm a big Sean Amara fan. So um, uh, are there other doctors on the show? Yes. Uh, Dr. Jesus Vega is a doctor and a very, very well-trained prevention doc. We also have a lot of docs in our uh, audience. And it's surprising to find the knowledge that most of our, so many of our viewers have. Uh, they'll come in as patients and know more about the, the disease processes such as insulin resistance than 95% of docs. So uh, another question, uh, Sean, you, you mentioned uh, what does visceral fat have to do with arteries? That's a big deal for us. Uh, and let me walk the, the viewers through that. We think of, as we mentioned in the very beginning, we think of uh, body fat as an inert energy storage uh, tissue. And Sean's whole show has been about, no, it's not. Let's go a little bit deeper into what's actually happening. <clears throat> Sean mentioned adiponectin. <clears throat> there are a couple of hormones that are made by fat tissue. Adiponectin is one of them. Leptin is another. And a third one is resistin. As Sean mentioned, adiponectin increases insulin sensitivity. Resistin decreases insulin sensitivity. What are those? How, do, how are they made and, and why do they do that? So, If you remember what insulin is all about, it's about letting energy get stored in fat cells. It's set up to be there for times when you don't get energy, when you can't get food. So the fat cells have mechanisms to say, okay, we're, we've got room, we've got capacity, bring it on. We'll pull that blood sugar into the fat cell, just like pouring gas into the gas tank. Now, when the tank gets full, though, those fat cells have to say, look, whoa, I'm done. I'm full. I can't hold any more. Well, resistin and adiponectin are exactly that. Resistin closes the gas tank. It says, I can't take any more sugar and turn it into fat for storage. Resistin is a hormone made by full fat cells, which drives and creates insulin resistance, telling the, the uh, body, I can't take any more sugar and, turn, and store it as fat. Adiponectin, which Sean mentioned, is sort of the opposite hormone. It's also made by fat cells, but it's made by fat cells when they're more empty, when they've got more capacity to bring sugar in and store it as fat. So what adiponectin does as uh, Sean said, is it improves insulin sensitivity. So ho hopefully that helps connect a few dots in terms of what we're talking about. Thank yeah, you so I, love, uh, I love resistant and, and bringing attention to it. And uh, a chief source of resistant comes from deep subcutaneous fat. So <clears throat> I wish they, uh, they taught us these mechanistic um, uh, Uh, models in, in medical school, but they don't. It's, it's, this is a product of Dr. Brewer's um, efforts to truly help his patients uh, become healthier. So I applaud you for understanding the importance of these, uh, these, these hormones and these, these molecules that are going throughout the body. So, 
yeah, you really do want to get rid of your deep subcutaneous fat where resistant comes from, and you want to maintain your superficial subcutaneous fat where at a, in large part your adiponectin comes from. And then think about people that are having liposuction, where they're having their superficial subcutaneous fat uh, removed. Mm. And uh, a lot of women have written to me when they did that, their health worsened and their faces got less attractive. So it's very interesting. And when I was researching six packs, trying to warn people, you do not want to have a visible six pack. You want a six pack, but you want it concealed like a uh, undercover six pack, a layer of superficial, wonderful adiponectin secreting visceral fat or subcutaneous fat, like the Johnny Weissmuller of our day, Tarzan, when we were young kids, Dr. Brewer, you know, 60s yeah. and 70s, Tarzan had a thin layer of sub Q fat on him. Today's bodybuilders have their shredded, like V shred guy, no subcutaneous fat, and they'll have a lot more visceral fat inside of them. And when I was researching those six packs, very often people had unattractive faces, their faces were cut off, their faces would be down trying to conceal. It's just very interesting um, association between the lack of superficial subcutaneous fat and the impact it has in our health and our appearance. So Jesus, uh, one more thing in terms of the strategies, just to review them again, uh, on a personal basis. Number one, yes, I've eliminated processed foods. Number two, uh, fermented foods. Yep, I had uh, some sauerkraut just yesterday. Uh, extended fasting last week, as you know, or the week before, I did a five-day extended water fast. Um, maximum intensity exercise. Yep, each week I do uh, hill sprints. Um, I've heard, Sean, that's one of your favorites. Yeah. Um, I don't lift as much weight as I should, but I go for intensity. Not uh, I used to be a, a uh, half marathon runner and a marathon runner. I gave those up and I'm in better shape than I was when I was doing marathons. So, and yes, I take, uh, I always finish my shower with a, with a cold shower. So uh, yeah, I'm 66 and um, I, I agree with the, the things that you've listed there in terms of things to do to as you get old, because growing old is not for sissies. <laughs> yeah. Um, one point I'll make about distance running is this uh, client that came to us for being part of our study. He has a huge amount of visceral fat inside and a very small amount of subcutaneous fat. So he's a tofi, thin outside, fat inside. He's only 34, so probably kind of the same age when you were doing a lot of distance running. Only this guy did excessive distance running, 10 marathons a year. Very mm. competitive. And with all that visceral fat, look at his heart fat, big chunk of cardio fat uh, surrounding his heart uh, when the scans were done. And his reaction when I shared this with him, and it never would have happened you know, through a DEXA scan, is that this guy went over to me stuck a finger in his face, very my face, and got very aggressive saying, I'm going to be your most motivated client, you know, because it mm -hmm. woke him up. And he saw this disease inside of him, and he completely abandoned instantly distance running and adopted sprinting. So he no longer runs and has never run again since that moment. So it's been nine years, uh, again, the impact of the MRI showing him and this association, we would almost always see in distance runners and distance cyclers, anybody doing chronic exercise, endurance exercise, this accumulation of visceral fat and fat around the heart, the, the, the exact explanation of it is still elusive. We don't know exactly why, but it's somehow the body's um, response to that endurance exercise. It just makes it harder to get rid of visceral fat. Even when you start eating healthy and do these other things, we just did not see the elimination of visceral fat uh, as quickly and as easily as when you when people abandon that distance running. So it's one of the things we exhort people to do right away, stop the distance running, to start sprinting um, biologically, ancestrally. I think we were sprinters and fighters. We killed prey. We defended ourselves from uh, attack 
and we sprinted from danger or we sprinted to hunt. So those two, how well you fought and how fast you could run were the two things that kept you in the gene pool the longest and most impacted the quality of life that you're going to have, how much, how well you're going to live. Sprinting and fighting, today I don't advocate fighting, but you can lift weights and do maximum intensity exercise in a way that mimics or emulates fighting without the risk for injury. Hey, Seuss, we're not giving you a chance. Take it away. Uh, so, <laughs> hey, Jesus is the is the answer Nazi. By the way, that's a, there's a long story about that. He likes to control the que the ans the questions and the answers. Let me tell you, it's been frustrating for me today because I cannot interrupt that much, and the show has <laughs> been fantastic. So maybe there's a correlation right there: the show being fantastic and me not interrupting that much. <laughs> uh, let me add this real quick. I'm sorry. Before we go to a Q and A, I had to do this again. So if you're enjoying the show, if you're new to the channel. Or if you are already a member of the channel, we had an event in St. Petersburg, Florida last year, which was a huge success. We're trying to replicate that, double our efforts, improve our content even. We're changing some of the topics. So if you haven't, visit PrepMedHealthEvents.com. You'll have a link below on the description of the video. April the 18th to the 20th, uh, get uh, make charge of your own health. Make charge of it. We have multiple... Uh, options for you either if you want to see just the conference get a cmt get a full lab work and uh, get other stuff done or just go ahead and say hi to dr brewer myself and the team uh so visit prepmedhealthevent.com april the 18th to the 20th dallas texas now uh now, before you move on keep that up there and let me respond to that comment so it sounds like a commercial and yes it is it's a commercial from our sponsor and our sponsor is us um <laughs> We had one person say, hey, enough of the commercials. I don't know if he was talking about this commercial or other commercials coming through the uh, through from uh, AdSense. But if it's AdSense, there's nothing we can do about that. On this commercial, um, let me just tell you a little bit about this. There are multiple people that have said on a regular basis, yes, that event saved my life. So, yeah, if you can see it as a commercial, we see it as saving lives. Um, you know, old men, Sean called me an old man a couple of times today, and he's <laughs> right. And I'll proudly say, yep, yeah, I'm an old man, and uh, growing old is not for sissies. So I'm making it and doing very thriving in my old age at 66. Um, my generation of men were taught, don't cry. You don't cry no matter what. And almost, I, I don't remember having one of these events when we didn't have at least uh, one session of a boomer male crying. Uh, we had it three times at the last session in St. Pete. One was uh, a male who, who had brought his wife and he was very excited about the opportunity to save her life. Another one was, uh, again, a male my age, uh, late 60s, and he'd been through the usual, the stents, the bypass, the, uh, the confusion, the multiple procedures, and he had never heard what was actually causing his problems. And he was not, he, he got emotional, not so much for himself, but he just got emotional understanding what's happening to people in the United States and all over the world when the information's right here. They go through what they go through, including ripping your chest open, pulling your rib cage back, uh, doing very aggressive and brutal surgery inside your chest, and instead they could have, would have, should have done something different. So it's a very emotional process. It saves lives. I have absolutely no problem with uh, Jesus making sure that people are aware that this event's coming up. Yeah, I couldn't agree uh, more with you, uh, Dr. Brewer. And uh, you know, as a third party observer on the sideline, um, I commend you in your efforts to, uh, to prevent and, and reverse this disease process that others are just treating. And um, 
you know, if you're listening uh, and you think that th these are strong commercials, like there's a commercial aspect, I'm going to change your, your thought. Spend your money and your time and your effort to reverse and prevent disease and stop the insanity of just treating and living with disease. You should be getting better as you age. And uh, Dr. Brewer is uh, remarkably healthy for a guy 66 years of age. He looks fantastic. He's six years um, older, my senior, well, maybe five years, so I'm about to turn 61. So uh, I, I think this is a, an exciting event. And I, I, hope, I hope you all the success and lots of people go to, to the summit. We appreciate that, Dr. Mora. And I can tell you for a fact, the first time I met Dr. Brewer, he's taller than I thought he was going to be. And I was shorter than what he <laughs> thought I was going to be. Those damn Mexican jeans. <laughs> now, uh, if you're familiar with, this, with the show uh, Seinfeld, you might, got, you might know the guy uh, who sells soup and that is very picky about who sells soup to. No soup yeah. for you. So, Rafi, do you have that, that graphic for us, please? I hope you have it. If you don't, I mean that's okay. Uh, because of the, you can uh, find it. And you can go ahead. Yeah, that's okay. We we have a lot of people asking questions, but we're I'm trying to uh, create some uh, uh, order in here. So I'm I'm going first with those people who either uh, gave us a ch super chat or are due to member. So third, look at for name. Great to see Dr. Omara in this channel. I hope he will cover his functional tests and his proper health test to assess one's health. Uh, Dr. Omara, you have talked about that during the show, but do you have an, any additional message for Tara looking for name? Yeah, so w one of the ways, maybe a quick uh, slide, how I, I cover uh, what we do with our clients and functional tests is we get them sprinting. And when we sprint, because our definition is how you look and how you perform. So we'll take an image Here's a guy who's filled with visceral fat, and we take a screenshot of them in a certain position, which is when they are their forward leg is maximally elevated and their trailing leg is maximally extended. So we capture that in, in multiple strides, and then we, we measure the angle formed by the spine to the femur. And the larger that angle, the more visceral fat they have. And then the smaller that angle, the smaller the visceral fat they have. And also the higher they get their foot and the higher they get their knee and the faster they run, the better they perform. So visceral fat is not just an inflammatory substance. It actually uh, influences how you perform. And then another example that Sal gets talked about, but we, we discuss it in our consultations for clients is how well you pee. I mean, if you're a 50, 60, 70 year old man, you should be peeing over a car, I tell my clients. But most people have got an inflamed uh, prostate swollen. And so their capacity for urinating, they have a weak stream, they're getting up all night long. Uh, how well you pee, how well you defecate, have a bowel movement goes to that functionality. So one of the things that I think is also important to talk about with functionality that I go into my clients is um, the Bristol stool chart. So you want to have a bowel movement with a tapered stool on both ends, very smooth. It looks like soft serve ice cream. You rather than have these other types. So you want to have a type four stool and you want to have that bowel movement in about three to five seconds. No gas, no noise, no smell. That's a sign of an optimized, biologically optimized human being and how how is that uh, stool? That was the way you used to be when you were two and three years old, learning to to uh, when you were first you know being toilet trained. And if you're a parent, when you wipe, you teach your child to wipe, there would be no stool on their toilet paper because the anus functions so perfectly that there would be no residual stool. Just like animals don't have to wipe; they don't have residual stool. A healthy animal. Uh, but humans, we have to wipe because our anus, our pubic rectalis muscle doesn't work. But that's the other thing I noticed in our clients is they don't have to wipe. They have a bowel movement in three to five seconds as they get rid of their visceral fat, that muscle starts performing way better. So we spend a lot of time. It's a five hour consultation when people come in, but those are two quick functional tests that we do get into. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Omara. Uh, I hope that that was helpful for, for the people in the audience. I'm pretty, much, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, Anthony Stephens uh, just became a YouTube member. So if you want to become a, a Prep Med Health channel YouTube member, just right to the bottom of subscribe, there is a button that says join. So there you can join there for a couple of bucks. What are the benefits? Well, the benefits are we're going to get your questions first. Uh, basically, Brad, good morning, Premier team and everyone. Hit the like button. Yes, hit the like button. If you like the show, hit the like button. If you don't like it, dislike the button and share it with your enemies. But still, that's a good thing to do. Uh, <laughs> Brad, could Dr. Omara speak to the concept of incrementally pursuing exercise and especially sprinting? So many people are short shorting their journey from significant physical deficit injuries are a problem. I think especially those who are uh, starting from scratch have never exercised and want to go from zero to 100. Uh, definitely, there's some some stuff to think about there, right? Yeah. So um, a lot of older people, and I shouldn't say because they're age, because uh, uh, Dr. Brewer and myself are, are older and we're doing okay. But if you have a lot of visceral fat, you're going to be vulnerable to muscle strain and injury. And not only to the injury, but your recovery is going to be a lot slower. So I've had a lot of followers, people on the internet write that they tried sprinting and it's been almost, you know, a year and they're still suffering from discomfort for that particular area because it's so slow in the recovery. So my recommendations, the older population is um, if uh, you, you, should, you should slowly integrate into maximum intensity exercise, maybe starting with a stationary bike or sprinting in water you know, running in a pool in about three, four feet of water will, will help you, uh, or try sprint swimming in a pool where you just, instead of sprinting, you're swimming as fast as you can, uh, which is a little bit safer way to get started. And as Dr. Brewer mentioned, um, sprinting up hills is a favorite of mine for older people because it's actually safer. Uh, you don't go as fast. And, uh, and believe it or not, even though it's harder in that sense, it's uh, easier to do from an injury standpoint to avoid decrease your 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 risk of getting an injury. But it's in the acceleration phase that most of these people are injured. Every person that I've talked to, it's been when they've accelerated um, into it. So you want to do a very 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 slow acceleration, and you know warming up is is a good idea. So incrementally, um, you really. You want to be very, very cautious. And if you feel anything funny going on in your legs, abort. There's no pride in this. You know, avoid injury at all cost. So uh, get started on the strategies. Uh, health optimization is not a light switch, I tell my clients. Biological optimization of humans is not a light switch. It's a life journey. And so just start slow and don't be in a hurry. Everybody seems to like, gotta get, get rid of this visceral fat. You know, bring all that enthusiasm for cutting out processed foods and eating clean, and then slowly increase uh, and integrate um, an exercise strategy. So we have coaches uh, that, that work with our clients and people who even aren't our clients, we, we do, we're able to squeeze in some outsiders. So if you're interested in working with our coaches, um, you can get more information about that on our website. Wonderful. Can, can you share, what's your website, Dr. Amara? Uh, really, it's just my name, www.drseanomara.com. So just uh, just my name, drshawnamara.com. And you can wow. also get to my websites through my social media. I'm on Instagram, also under the same name, Dr. Sh uh, Dr. Sean Amara. YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And you can just go to my profile, my bio on each of those, and it will take you to uh, all my websites. We have an educational community. I do lots of videos and uh, content. My passion is reversing chronic disease. So I put it out there before I die, I wanna solve humanity's biggest problem, which is chronic disease, because nothing do we spend more money on Nothing is more, more money wasted on. Nothing decreases human productivity more, employee productivity more, holds back companies more, and nothing kills more people and impairs quality of life more than chronic disease. And nobody's talking about it, but Dr. Dr. Brewer and Prave Men and Dr. Vega, 
um, you guys are helping to stamp this out. And so I applaud you both for, for doing that. And if you're listening today, share this content with other people so they, they can be aware about the problem with chronic disease, the enormous problem it is, and that there really are authentic uh, solutions to reversing chronic disease out there. Thank you so much. And please, let me give you a quick story on mine. And now we have that graphic on there. No answers for you if not a, you're not a private YouTube member. I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, we were talking I, about, Sean. I, I, I'm, plan, I'm, planning, I'm planning on having my MRI this Saturday. I've been delaying that for multiple reasons, but I'm planning to have that done. I was talking to the person on the establishment, which is a few blocks away from my house. When, I, when they asked for a diagnosis, I was like, well, you can put their visceral fat or obesity or overweight, whatever you want. And they're like, no, we don't do we don't do MRIs for that, you know? We do MRIs if you have a liver issue, if you have a kidney issue. It's like you were talking in them in a different language. And it's impressive about that. And now that that's a, a small segue to technology. Rick Folia is asking if there is any AI apps to evaluate MRI or CT scans for visceral fat, or do you think is that even necessary, Dr. Omara? What do you think? Um, I, it's in the works. That's what I'll tell that viewer. We're doing it. <laughs> so, uh, Wonderful. Um, yeah. And as far as your comment, um, uh, Jesus, you know, what I tell people is instead of putting down visceral fat, cause they, they don't, doctors don't know how to read it. Radiologists don't, they won't scan for it. Just put down either chronic pain or diverticular disease. Just see if you got diverticular disease that, that will get your CPT code and that will get that scan done. And uh, you don't you, you care less about diverticular disease, or you don't want it. You care more about your visceral fat. But I see a lot of diverticular disease in people that have a lot of visceral fat. So that's that's often the way I get my clients that are doing follow up at a site that you know don't want to do it for visceral fat. I just put in um, uh, eval for diverticular disease, gets it done. Wonderful. And we don't have, we don't, have, that's a really good tip for, uh, for folks in the U.S. On Mexico, we don't have such thing as CPT codes. Anyone can go ahead and get a test without a doctor's order. So that's, it's, it's just a wild west over here. Dr. Brewer? Yeah. So this is off topic, but it's a good question. One of the viewers is asking about the recent niacin information. And yes, we do have a lot of folks that will come to us. They hear about niacin and, and they don't really understand. Uh, what happens is they hear about it and they say, oh, well, I've heard it's good for our heart disease prevention, so maybe I should take a bunch of it. Um, we get more people that are taking it for nonspecific reasons, and I wouldn't do that. There are specific reasons like LP little a, um, and I've got a series of videos on niacin itself. Now, uh, Dr. Vega just reviewed last night the new information that was in Nature magazine. And there's a lot of pros and cons to that. Jesus, do you wanna give us a couple of minutes on that for those that are worried about it? Sure, and I appreciate your patience, Dr. Romero, with that topic. That's just a kind of a hot topic for our channel. I spent multiple hours reading that article yesterday at night. And uh, what I have some, some quick stuff to mention about that article real quick. First, it's a good article. It's a good journal. Uh, the evidence is strong. However, just be careful about how they are presenting that. This is the clear example of marketing on medical news. So you have one article that says one thing, and then you have the big news saying, oh, niacin causes heart disease. A new research just said that. So bottom line, that's not what the article says exactly. First, they're saying when you have a niacin excess on your body, there are two metabolites that will cre be created because of that. 2P, 2PY and 4PY. And those are only created on an excess of niacin pool. Now, they are not blaming that on supplementation. They are blaming that on fortified cereals, wheat, and rice. Uh, other words, grain products, fortified grain products with niacin or B3 vitamin. Uh, so they're saying 80 years ago, we had started supplementing that by law because of uh, the risk of nutritional deficiency so niacin. That's not the case right now. A lot of people are eating ultra processed foods and they acknowledge on their own article that even though they analyze, uh, anal analyze about more than 1000 people, they don't know how that people were eating. They are assuming that they have a niacin excess because of those 
two byproducts of niacin metabolism, but they don't have the number. They don't know how many people were supplementing with niacin. And I can tell you for a fact that a lot of people are on our space, a lot of Dr. Brewer's patients who supplement with niacin are already on a low carb diet, already not eating ultra processed foods. So the risk of upper supplementation with niacin is just really low. So I would say like any, like most supplements, there is a risk of getting too much of, of something. But I think that danger is especially for those people who are eating, again, a lot of ultra processed foods, a lot of wheat, a lot of uh, grain products. And that might be the case if they just are just supplementing with niacin just because. So I think just, again, scare ta tactics to get more clicks on an article, which is a good article. It's presenting evidence that we, you, you must be careful with supplementation. But I don't think we are on a moment to just crucify niacin because of that article. So let, as we often do, let me translate. Um, oh, yeah, please do. <laughs> so when you look into the details of that niacin study in Nature magazine, it could very well be translated that, I mean, it could be the case that what's driving this is the niacin uh, biomarkers that they were finding are really more of a uh, biomarker for people that are eating a lot of bread and pasta. Eating a lot of bread and pasta, I think there's not much debate about that. That is a significant cardiovascular risk. So again, look before you leap. Don't just accept the headlines. Um, don't be so quick to jump on niacin for nonspecific reasons. But if you're on it for good reasons, like LP little a, don't let this uh, this article scare you off. It's being misinterpreted right now. Thank you, Dr. Brewer. We, we might cover it on a short or a long form video later on. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Amara, uh, we're taking a lot of your time. Let us know when you're when you uh, if you have any time constraints. Yeah, actually, I actually have a, a hard stop in two minutes. I got a 1030 that I got to jump to, but I got two minutes until then. OK, let, let's let's see how much we can do. Uh, what the wood ring has lost 35 pounds. Really not seeing any changes on lipid panel or insulin values. Uh, what changes should have he seen, uh, if any of those area, if any, his body fat is about 16%. I, I don't know if I understand the question, do you? Like, I don't know if this yeah, is for Dr. Omar or Dr. Clear. Ruhr. Yeah. Well, you, you we, yeah. we can we can we can touch base later on Woody and see if we can get a translation now from, a from you. Yeah. <laughs> can we invert a CT to create a pseudo MRI for this purpose? In birth? In birth, like as in the delivery of a human being? <laughs> I'm not sure what that's about. Either. I don't know. I'm sorry. I mean, I, they are YouTube members. They get they got their shot. I'm sorry. We we all don't understand the question. <laughs> Does fat loss alone affect BO2 max and therefore longevity? That's a good question. Also, thank you, Woody. Uh, so I guess the question is pertaining to uh, longevity and VO2 max. So uh, I used to be fascinated by VO2 max, but um, I've since left it because of a. Uh, you know, the cost and inconvenience of doing it and sending clients to to get it. So um, I think the science is uh, uh, pretty strong in terms of its its utility as a, as a metric, but I'm not sure that um, it, it approaches anywhere near the the benefit of, of direct assessment of visceral fat or myosteatosis or just, you know, looking at muscle to fat ratios. So um, I have never really been able to convince or get much improvement in somebody and tracking their VO2 max over a period of time. Uh, nowhere near the way I get when I track muscle fat, visceral fat, and uh, organ fat. So these, these other visual metrics, biometrics, I think have greater utility. But I will say that there are, there are a lot of studies that, that track VO2 max, and we are getting better at assessing them so they're not quite so cumbersome, but I would invite anybody and suggest anybody who's thinking about doing VO2 max to at least uh, include doing an MRI scan of your, your visceral fat. And in terms of pricing, you know, they can be done um, anywhere from as expensive as $2,900 in one place in Minnesota is the highest I've ever seen for cash pay and as low as $240 in Los Angeles. So it really depends wow. on where you're at that you um, 
you know, it dictates how much you're going to pay out of pocket cash for an MRI scan. Smart. Thank you. At, John, at this is... Let me let me go ahead with this last question and we can cut it off, Dr. Brewer. Okay. Is the jiggle test the MRI scan for the poor? The jiggle test when you jump off in front of the mirror and see anything that jiggles? Oh, <laughs> no, because that's just really going to largely look at your your um, your subcutaneous fat. But really, it's uh, inflammatory face, the influence of visceral fat. You can see it in the face and then a protruding abdomen, not because you can even have no visceral fat and have a protruding abdomen because you had visceral fat and it's weak in your muscles. So if you got saggy muscles and here's a quick one, if you are passing gas when you pee, you've had visceral fat in your life. You should pee silently without passing gas. So those are really quick metrics, how well you defecate, how well you pee. Those kind of things are really uh, economical approaches to um, how, assessing how without necessarily getting an MRI scan. But save your money. Listen, I drive a 17-year-old car. How old is your car? And you don't want to pay for you know $500 getting an MRI scan? Spend the money. Stop the nonsense. Take care of your health. Wonderful. Thank you Dr. so much, Sean. This has been a great show. Um, I'm a big fan. I'm living the, those five recommendations. Well, good. Well, thank you again, um, Dr. Vega and Dr. Burr for having me on. I uh, love what you guys are doing. And I wish you guys all the best down in your summit. Thank you so much. Thank we'll keep so in much. touch tomorrow. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank, you. Uh, thank you, everybody. See you next week. Okay.